Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala nabi and Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ma ba'd. So we were talking about the hadith al-Qudsi that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah the Almighty said qasamtu salat bayni wa bayna abdi nisfain that I that Allah the Almighty said <coughs> I have divided the prayer between myself and my servant in the two halves and we already mentioned the hadith where Allah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen or when the slave recites that ayat alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen Allah the Almighty says hamadini abdi that my slave has praised me so Sheikh, uh, Sheikh bin Uthimi rahmatullahi he mentioned in explaining this he said that this is because, uh, uh, and how we can understand this, this being split, uh, the, the surah, that half of it is for Allah and half of it is for the servant, it has to do with the haq of Allah. Half of it is, is, is the haq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the other half is related to the one reciting the ayat, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa Ta'ala. So he says, when uh, uh, in regards to this, Alhamdulillah, all praises belong to Allah, the Lord of the worlds, you know, the Lord of everything. So this is for, this has to do with the haq of Allah, Allah's right, because Allah's right is to be worshipped alone. And this comes in another hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the hadith of Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala an, where he said, Kuntu Radif and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala himar. Mu'adh was on a donkey with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's riding on the donkey with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he didn't necessarily have, uh, you know, have the nicest camels and have the nicest, but sometimes the most humblest ways on a donkey. None of us would, you know, see a king or a leader or a president riding a donkey now or something, or even driving in a Volkswagen, you know. They would have to be in the nice limo and garden and, and nice uh, suburbans and this and that and the other, okay? But the Prophet ﷺ was on a donkey with Mu'adh. And Mu'adh, uh, he, uh, the Prophet ﷺ said, Ya Mu'adh, tadri ma haqq Allah ali ibadi wa ma haqq al ibadi Allah. He said, O oh, Mu'adh, do you know the right of Allah upon his servant and the right of the servant upon Allah? So now we're getting to get the haq of Allah. What, what is Allah's right? What is Allah's right? His haq. So Mu'adhi said, Allah wa Rasulullah alam. He said, Allah and his messenger know best. So then the Prophet sallallahu said, Haq Allah al and ya'buduhu wa la tushriku bi shayin. And ya'buduhu wa la yushriku bi shayin. He said, the right of Allah is that you worship him and him alone and you do not associate any partners with him. And So the right of the servant upon Allah, so to speak, is that Allah will not punish him if he worships only him and him alone. Allah will not punish the servant. Why? Because he came with perfect tawheed. That is, the servant who came with perfect tawheed. That doesn't mean just any of us. But we, we all worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We pray. We fast for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We make umrah. We do other actions. We make dhikr. We do all, these work, all this ibadah. We do all this ibadah. But... The, the one who haqqaq tawheed, the one who fully, fully actualizes tawheed, this is the one who will not be punished. And, and so this goes back to, back to this hadith we were explaining that this hadith has to do with the right of Allah, which is what? What's Allah's right again? To, huh? 
to be worshipped alone. Jazakum Allah khairan. Ayu at talabit al ilm. Good. So Allah's right is to be worshipped alone and not to associate any partners with him. That's his right. And the right of the servant is not to be punished if they do that, if they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And so that's what this, in the explanation of this hadith, Ben Uthaymin is mentioning. He said, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, which is the other, uh, also a part of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rights, because this has to do with Allah's divine names and attributes, because no one else can have that, uh, we, don't, we don't call someone else Ar-Rahman. You can say, you say Abdurrahman. Because... That Ar-Rahman with the Alif Lam in the front, this makes it specific to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his divine name. That this is Allah's characteristic. This means the one who possesses uh, the most merciful, most merciful, Ar-Rahman. Okay, so this has to do with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's right as well. Because that has to do with the right of his divine names and attributes. All of this has to do with Tawheed. And this is in Surah Al-Fatiha. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Now. And then he said, Maliki Yawmuddin. Of course, the owner or the master of the Day of Judgment. That is divine. No one else owns anything of the Day of Judgment. We'll be called to account. All of that we had in the dunya, we lost. Will we'll, we'll not benefit us anymore. If you had children... What is the ayat uh, that the, 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 uh, the, the, the mother will flee from her child? Okay, so this lets us know how serious Yom al Qiyamah is. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Maliki Yom al he's the one who is the master of the day of judgment. The kings of the world and the presidents and all those leaders will be gathered together. And they will be asked, who is the Malik? Who is the king now? You know, who is this? It's the divine king. It's Allah Azza wa Jal, the master of the day of judgment. He owns it. He knows what, it, what it's going to be. He's in full control of it, not us and not any of our leaders or anyone. All of that has to do with the haq of Allah Azza wa Jal, Ben Uthaymin says. And then he says, Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. This also shows... Uh, that this has to do with the haq of Allah and uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, that the haq of the servant who is worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because this is a dua. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. It's you alone who we worship and it's you alone who we seek support or, or assistance. So you're imploring Allah, you're making dua to Allah. Iyaka na'budu. You can't say that to any. Iyaka. Iyaka in the Arabic language, when you have the iya, this is, uh, it emphasizes something. This is very, very strong. Iyaka na'budu. So it, it, it makes it very strong. Like if I say to you, I say, Zahabu uh, Rashad wa iyahu. Or, no, Zahaba ana wa iyahu. And I, I'm talking about Rashad or something. I said, I, uh, or, or the have to, ana wa iyahu. I left or I went with him. That iyahu gives it emphasis. I could say, the have to, ma Rashad il dukan. Okay, yeah, maybe someone else went with us. But the have to, ma Rashad, ma hu, the have to, il dukan, wa iyahu. This puts emphasis. It gives it very strong emphasis. So that means it more than likely that it was only me and him. Iyahu. So it puts a strong emphasis. Iyaka na'budu. It's you alone we worship. Wa iyaka nasta'in. And it's you alone who we depend upon. So it's very, very strong. Then uh, the other part of, of course, wa ihdina sarat al-mustaqeem. You know, uh, guide us to the straight path. So this has to do with the haq of the servant. Because a servant and now, you're making dua to Allah. Every time you recite Surah Al-Fatiha, there's dua in there. You know that? Where's the dua? I just said it. You weren't listening. Be with us. Huh? 
Ihdinas al Mr. King. Well, what does that mean? She wants to talk. She's trying to give us the tips here. MashaAllah. That's the, I think she's really giving him a hadra, a lecture now. MashaAllah. Allahu Akbar. When it comes to worship of Allah, she's not joking. Alhamdulillah. So, Ihdina Surat al Mustaqim, this is a supplication. Yes. Uh, guide us to the straight path. Yeah. So, you're begging Allah. Ihdina Surat al Mustaqim. It's very. Very powerful when we reflect. That's why we study tafsir. So that way we can know the meaning of the ayats and the verses that we recite. Then, uh, uh, so this is for the servant. Surat al-ladheena an'amtu alayhim. An'amtu alayhim. An'amtu alayhim. This is for the servant as well. Okay, the surat, the, the straight path, which uh, that you have... Uh, uh, you know, provided the straight path that you you have blessed them with, and then to the rest of the ayat. So that has to do with the right of the servant. Whereas most of those beginning ayats had to do with the right of Allah Azza wa Jal to be worshipped alone. So then the Sheikh he mentions Qulhu Taala Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin Alhamd. So Alhamd, this is. Al Mahmud bi Kemal Mal Mahabba wa Ta'zim. Very important. So when we say Alhamd in the Arabic language like this, and in the Surah, Alhamdulillah, all the praise belongs to Allah. Because when you there's there's a couple of words they use that are used in Arabic to talk about praise. For example, if you want to talk about I, I'm praising so and so, you can say Athna alayh. You know, I, I, I am praising him. Yuthni, athna yuthni alayhi. You know, I'm giving him, uh, or this has to do with praising him, the word athna. Or you could say madh. Madh also means praise. But hamd, alhamd is very strong, and this has even a greater meaning when you say alhamd. You don't say ham, hamid to ala so and so. You don't say that. But instead, this has a. Uh, an aspect of ibadah because it's so strong. Alhamdulillah, uh, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. All praise belongs to Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. And so that's why the, the Sheikh said, he said that this is a description, uh, Al Mahmud bi Kimal Mal Mahabba. This is the description of the one who is praised. So this is a sifa, Alhamd, sifa Alhamd. You know, of the one being praised that he is ka, uh, sif, sifat kamal means it's a it's it's a characteristic which is complete and perfect. Ma mahabba with love, because when you you might praise someone but you don't love them. If you madahtu ala fanan, you know I praised so and so. You might praise him. You might say he's a good tennis player. He's a good basketball player. He's a good football player. Oh, she's good at uh, ice skating or whatever. She's good at volleyball, whatever. She's good at math. Okay, you're praising her. That doesn't mean you love her. That doesn't have love and ta'zim. But alhamd, hum has this love and ta'zim, you know, that you're, so you're exalting Allah, the Almighty. So that's why it has to do with ibadah. We're okay. Everybody understands. Inshallah ta'ala. And so it refers to the, to the, the, uh, the completeness and the perfection of Allah Himself, and His that His 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 characteristics, His divine characteristics and names are perfect, and His actions. So all this has to do with uh, the the sifat of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Also, the actions of Allah. Allah has actions. Ar Rahman ala ars istawa, the Most Merciful. He rose above His throne. That's an action to rise is an action. His rising above his throne is not like us. You might rise above your chair, but you can't compare to Allah because Allah says, uh, yeah. uh, that there is nothing comparable to him, nothing like Allah. But he is the all, and he is the all hearing and all seeing. So Allah sees and Allah hears. These are his attributes. And those are his sifat. But they are not like ours. 
Ours are not like his, subhanahu wa ta'ala. His, his, his sight and his hearing is perfect. Although he possesses hearing and sight, but his is perfect. Ours is limited. We can only hear in this room. We can hear the baby. We can't hear in the other room. We can't hear the ants. We can't hear maybe the termites in the walls. We can't hear the birds outside. We can't see everything like Allah Azza wa Jal. So there's no comparison. This is why there's no comparison between Allah and his creation. Uh, so those are just some of the uh, benefits right there uh, related to Alhamd and the perfection of Allah Azza wa Jal. Rabbil Alameen. So Allah is the Lord of all the worlds. We know this, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The ulama, they say regarding this, a very important thing about Ar-Rab. Ar-Rab. With the Alif Lam and the Rab. So when we say the Lord, Ar-Rab, Rabbil Alameen, the Lord of the worlds, the Sheikh says, he said, This is beautiful. So Sheikh bin Uthameen, he said, that the one is who is Ar-Rab, they have to have three characteristics. Otherwise, they can't be a Rab. So this is, shows us the falseness of the people who worship other things besides Allah. Those people who worship Jesus, alayhi salatu wasalam, or some people worship Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Some people worship Abdul Qadir Jailani. Some people worship... Bedouin, some people worship Fatima, some people worship Ali radiallahu ta'ala in. They worship all kind of people and all kind of animals. The people, I just saw the Hindus, they worship rats, they worship uh, uh, elephants, and the cow. Many things are sacred to them. And those things do not have these characteristics. To be the Rub, the Lord, you have to have these three osaf, these three characteristics. Al-Khalq, wa Malak, wa Tadbir. That you're the creator, that you can create. None of us can create. An elephant can't create. An elephant can go to the bathroom. That's all. And he can't control his, ba his bowel movement. So he doesn't create anything. He has a baby or she has a baby. The elephant female has a baby. Only if Allah allows it to have a baby after it made it. But there's no guarantee. Maybe the ba baby is healthy. Maybe it's sick. Maybe it dies. They didn't create. Allah... Create so he is al khalik so that's one of the characteristics of the rub. The second characteristic of the rub, al malik, that he is the the king and the owner of the dominion. He owns everything. There are some wealthy people. Bill Gates is very wealthy. He owns Microsoft. He owns many things, but he's limited still. Allah owns Bill Gates. Allah owns everything because he created everything. The angels, everything. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, wa tadbir. Tadbir meaning that he is the planner of all things from his infinite wisdom, his infinite hikmah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So those are the characteristics of a rub, a lo the Lord. And I think we'll, we'll stop there for now. And we'll continue on in the next sitting and hopefully finish it next sitting. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.